Uh, my name is Amanda D. Simone Shabrak, and I am the owner and life coach of Realize That Are You Life Coaching and Motivational Speaking Services. And I'm so glad that everybody could join me this evening. I didn't procrastinate signing up for this important class. Really appreciate that. And uh, just to explain to you that this is going to probably be about a 30 to 40 minute webinar, and then we'll do the questions again at the end, just to repeat the, that for the people that are just joining us now. Again, the polls will appear that I'm going to take right on your screen, and you just need to select the answer that best fits for you. Uh, let's see. What else can I go over here? All right, well, we'll go ahead and get started then. Looks like we have most people on the line with us. Uh, I'm here in Raleigh, North Carolina, and my family and I recently moved here. Uh, we had procrastinated getting our stuff together and moving down to North Carolina for a little mm -hmm. while. We finally just made that bold decision last summer, and in August we moved down here, and we couldn't be happier. So we're really excited to be here and starting our new lives. Um, but when I got here, I started to procrastinate and getting some other things done that I wanted to get done. And one of those things was to get my coaching practice up and running. So I thought, what a great opportunity then for me to get going on this, but also teach a class on procrastination, not only to help me, but to help the people that were in the same situation as I was, or am still, in, in a sense, I guess you can say. Uh, let's see. Let me just get to this next page. Okay, so let's talk about procrastination in general. So what is procrastination? So procrastination, simply put, is the conscious choice to delay or postpone an action. So avoiding doing things that need to be done or leaving things undone for as long as possible. And I'm going to tell you a quick little story, a tale of two doggies, as I like to call it. Uh, my daughter and I, my older daughter and I, were driving home one day here in Raleigh, and there, there was a woman that was driving, I'm sorry, excuse me, a woman that was walking her two very large dogs on the sidewalk. The dog was leaner, and the second seemed to be, I'm sorry, and that one seemed to be enjoying the walk much better than the second one. The other one was kind of just going with the motions and seemed like he just didn't want to be there. He was tugging along on the leash. And next thing you know, we see the second dog drop to the ground. So my daughter and I obviously were quite concerned so we decided to swing the car around and check on the woman, make sure she was okay, make sure the dog was okay. And they, you know what? She said, this is so funny, but he's such a drunk king. He really doesn't like to go for a walk. He's being stubborn, and he figured if he just laid down on the ground that he wouldn't have to go. But he's gotten so big because he gives me trouble every time I try to take him for a walk. If he keeps doing this, he won't be able to fit through the doggy door at home. So, of course, we all got a chuckle out of it, and we left. Um, and the woman said, don't worry about it. I'm going to splash some water on his face, and he'll get up, and he'll get going. So, obviously, this story is a nice example of how when we delay what we really need to do, in this case, the doggy needs to get out and get exercise, there could be some consequences from our actions. And we're going to talk about that more in just a few minutes. But let me pause here for a minute and ask, why are you attending tonight's class? I just want you to think about that for a minute. Why did you decide to sign up for this class? Are you the procrastinator? I found some cute little signs on there to kind of reflect what a procrastinator thinks about. Oh, I have somebody saying that I'm, I'm cutting in and out. Can everybody hear me okay now? Can everybody hear me okay now? Okay. I have a couple people saying yes, they can hear me okay. All right. Well, I apologize. We are taping this. So if there's, for whatever reason, uh, you miss some of it, I'm, I'm certainly happy to send you the, the link to the recorded um, program. We're taping it not only on the screen, but I'm also just uh, audio as well. So we can certainly send it to you. Anyway, so my question was, are you the procrastinator or are you actually staying on, on the line to listen in because you, you want to help somebody else that you know is a procrastinator? 
my favorite of all the little signs that are on here is the clock because it always seems like you have enough time to get everything done. So as the time goes on and it's like, okay, yeah, I, I can just kind of be back. I can get a whole hour. I got two, I got three. Oh no, I only got a couple hours. And in fact, tonight, that's kind of how it was here at my house as I'm trying to get ready for the call. Um, I'm sorry, someone just commented I'll procrastinate tomorrow and it's making me laugh. Anyway, um, so, you know, I figured, okay, I'll, I'll get dinner ready at five o'clock and we'll have a little early tonight and everything will be done. And I'll go ahead and nurse the baby and we'll be all set to go. And of course, you know, it's, it's 15 minutes before I need to be on the call and I'm up here rushing around trying to get everything done ready for the call. So <laughs> still even, even to this day, I'm still learning that uh, I need to manage my time a little bit better. Okay, so we're going to take a little quiz now. Um, I, I'm trying to find out from you if you're on the call because you're the procrastinator or whether you're here for um, somebody else. Give me just one second. I'm going to go to the polls over here and see if I can get that to come up. Okay. Okay, so hopefully you can see the poll that's in front of you. So are you the procrastinator? Do you know somebody that is a procrastinator you want to help? Or is it that you never procrastinate, but my new nose just grew like Pinocchio, so I figured I would stay on and listen to you anyway? Now, I don't, I don't see that my father's on the call, but if he is, I'm sure that's one you're going to choose. Because his answer to the poll that I asked you guys on the sheet was he'll have to get back to me. What, you know, what's the one thing he'd like to change? He'll have to get back to me. So, you see, some of you are still answering, but if you need a little help here, uh, have you forgotten to pay a bill or not paid a bill just because you didn't have the time to sit down and write the check? Not because you didn't have the funds, but because you didn't sit down to actually write the check out. How about purchasing a book that you really want to read and it's still sitting on the shelf today collecting dust? Maybe you said to yourself, well, I'm going to start my diet today. But then the spouse comes home with ice cream and you say, well, I'll just start tomorrow instead. Okay, so hopefully you have your answer. So let's see. So I had one person say that they were the one with the Pinocchio nose. Thank you very much. Um, but it looks like most people are saying that they are the procrastinator. I do have one person that is saying that they are on because they want to help somebody else who's a procrastinator. So it looks like there's some people saying, you know, that they, they completely forget, completely forget to pay the bill. They put it aside two months later, they find it. And, and what were the consequences of that? You know, you're going to have to pay a late fee. There's all kinds of situations like that that come up. I'm sorry, bear with me just one second. So the map, the procrastinator who's protecting her city from crime and, and evildoers, I guess that says, maybe the afternoon or sometime tomorrow she gets a chat, chance. Yeah, so somebody said, deep late fee lowers credit score. Absolutely happens. So I'd like to go over some statistics with you, but unfortunately when I tried to look them up, whoever does the statistics on procrastination didn't have time to do it for me apparently. <laughs> I just thought you guys would find that a little humorous, but let me actually give you some information. First of all, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. If you didn't guess by now, we all procrastinate. We all do. For most people, it's often just the little things like mowing the lawn or making that phone call that you really don't want to make, paying the bill, writing a thank you note, giving the dog a bath. And for the most part, these things are harmless. I mean, you do have some consequences that come along with it. Some of be, you might have a stinky dog for a while. You might have to wear long pants mowing that lawn because you don't want to get ticks. Uh, but heck, you know, it's, it's not that bad. You might be a little upset with yourself for a couple minutes over it, but usually you can get through it. But the consequences obviously aren't big enough for us to really want to do something about it usually. We're going to talk about that in a few seconds. But for Americans especially, we're procrastinating more and more on the big stuff too. We live in a nation of chronic procrastinators, and if you really want evidence of that, just take a look at Congress lately. 
the perfect example on how much we procrastinate in this country. They can't seem to agree on anything, and they wait till the last minute to pass anything that needs to be passed. And I don't want to get into politics, so I'll leave that one alone after that. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. But it's getting worse in this country, and the consequences for some of these issues are huge. For example, we wait to go to the doctors for the checkup, for a checkup, excuse me. It's estimated that 56% of Americans don't have an annual physical, and the average person goes three years between visits to the dentist. That's huge. I can't imagine not having my teeth cleaned every six months. I go a little crazy. I'm a little fanatic about that. We wait to have the car serviced for the engine light that keeps coming on that's blinking. We don't do anything about it for weeks or months. Any of you that are Big Bang Theory fans, you know Penny. She's always, you know, just saying, oh, you know, it's just the light. It's nothing wrong. It must be just the light that's on. And then there's an episode where she says, oh, yeah, the light works fine, but the engine broke. So, yeah, we do those things, and then there's consequences that come along with that. The biggest one lately, though, that I've read a lot about is about Americans that are retiring later and later. And much of the time, it's not because they lost their savings in some Ponzi scheme or they had to bail their brother-in-law out of some failing business. It's because they didn't start saving soon enough or putting enough money away to prepare for their retirement. They procrastinated, and now they have to make up for it by working longer to save. And for some they never even get the chance to retire at all. So there was a study done at the New School of Social Research um, that estimates that 75% of Americans nearing retirement in 2010 had less than $30,000 in their retirement. Now, that's just talking about money to pay for everyday expenses. But what about the things you'd like to do in life? There's no extra money for that if you're not putting the money away ahead of time. We're talking about procrastination in general, and I'll, I'll give you an opportunity later to actually sign up for another class of mine where we can delve really into that. Um, but in the interim, just to give you those little bit of statistics so that you can see that. So consequences, small consequences. Um, you know, I... I Sometimes feel that way myself that, you know, oh, yeah, there's a consequence. I'm just not going to do it anyway because I really just don't feel like it. I procrastinate to the last minute, and then I'm, I'm all stressed about getting it done. So it also, when you procrastinate, can cause issues with relationships, can cause um, some health issues. I mean, there's people who have had strokes over the stress that they've encountered. They've uh, had heart attacks. You know, you're tired all the time. There's all these health risks that come into play for that. Then there's the financial issues that come along with procrastinating. Somebody mentioned earlier when you don't pay bills, you can you know, affect your credit. Absolutely can do that. If you procrastinate at work, you could lose your job. That's terrible. Obviously, you won't have the money coming in to pay all those bills. And then you can also face foreclosure. Bear with me, guys. I'm having a little technical difficulty here again. Oh, um, one thing I just wanted to mention is, is that we have to stop lying to ourselves. I had someone say to me the other day when I was talking about this subject that, oh, I thrive under pressure, so that's why I wait to do it. Um, you know, that, that's great that, that you're able to get the work done under pressure, but you don't realize that when you're under that amount of pressure, the stress that it takes takes on you to actually do that. And, and this country has seen an absolute huge increase in the amount of depression and anxiety and the medications that we're using to treat people for those things. And a lot of it is because we're putting that much pressure on ourselves to actually get, get things done at the last minute, putting too much on ourselves. Okay. All right. So I don't know if you guys remember at the very beginning of the webinar, I said that when we procrastinate, it is a conscious choice that we're making. And it is true. It's exactly that. We have a choice in whether we're going to get the work done or not. But we might need a little bit of motivation. That's really where that comes in. I apologize again. I'm having a little trouble getting this to come up. Oh, goodness. 
Um, so I, I mentioned to us before, hopefully you did, you did remember me saying that. In fact, everything we do is a choice. You chose to sign up for this class and sit down and listen, didn't you? But why does it seem so hard sometimes to make certain choices? Well, part of it has to do with the fact that we, as Americans, have so many choices available to us. So here, I want to take a poll, another little poll here, and we'll go on to our next slide. Hopefully, there we go. And I want to take a little poll here. So you're, you're in the mood for ice cream, and there's two stores available to you. The first one only has three kinds of ice cream, vanilla, chocolate, strawberry. One has a variety of different flavors. They have Rocky Road, Butter Pecan, uh, cook, chocolate chip cookie dough. Um, they have cookies and cream, mint chocolate chip. They have all kinds of different ones. So I'm going to put this poll up in just a second, but which one, which store would you prefer to go to? Oops. Uh oh, bear with me. That didn't work. Let's try that again. I want to make this one live. There we go. So tell me, the one with the only three flavors, the one with the 25 flavors, or you don't like ice cream, then look, your nose just grew again. Give you another couple seconds. Answer that. Just waiting for a couple more people. It looks like every single person that answered, I don't see that everybody answered, but uh, every single person that's on here has voted that they prefer the one with 25 different flavors. As it turns out, your brain would actually prefer to have gone with the store with only three kinds of ice cream, no matter what your stomach is telling you. Now, why is that? Because it can easily pick out the flavor you like and be satisfied with that one. But when we have so many choices, there's a fear that we'll pick the wrong one. It's not going to be as satisfying, or there might have been a better choice. Now, we certainly can extend that this way, way, way beyond ice cream. We delay making decisions often because of this fear. If we make the wrong choice, we may not have the opportunity to change our mind. And then what? We're stuck with that decision. So we're going to talk about that fear, how that works. Let me see if I can get rid of this now. There we go. Okay, so fear is false evidence appearing real. So fear essentially is stories we tell each other, or tell ourselves, excuse me. It's this fear that keeps people from moving forward. It's that societal need for perfection that makes us think that unless we're going to get, it, we'll get a perfect outcome, then we should just stay still, inactive in our decision making. In fact, some people take it a step further than that. Instead of making a decision, they stay where they are, doing the same thing, almost content in the misery they feel doing the same thing, but at the same time, hoping for a different outcome. So I, I say this all the time. If you always do what you've always done, you always get what you always got. So it's time for us to make some of those changes. Now let's see. There we go. So we're afraid of that, that perfection rule, right? If we're not going to get it perfect, we're not going to be exactly like the Kardashians on TV, then why am I going to bother even trying? Well, it's that, that need for that perfection that keeps us from going forward. But the only person that you should be trying to be better than is you, better than the person you were yesterday. Try to let it go and say, you know what? When life gives me lemons, I'm just going to make lemonade with them. Or, and I say this to my husband all the time, is when things don't go the way that you want it to, just say plot twist and move on. Distraction. Distraction keeps us procrastinating. 
I love this one because it's the Facebook logo and they made a procrastination. Someone actually just mentioned Facebook as the depression. And it's true because we spend so much time on there and seeing what other people are up to. And for the most part, when people put their their lives up on Facebook, they don't say all the bad stuff. I mean, you have some people that will sit there and, and put all the negative things that are happening for that sympathy. But for the most part, it's all the good stuff. And people that aren't in the same situation tend to become depressed over that. But this is, I thought this was funny. So here's Facebook tugging at the person saying, you know, come on, come and watch me. Um, so we're constantly distracted, and that's part of the reason why we procrastinate, because there's something always better to do, something that's more fun, that doesn't feel like work. So that's why, why we continually procrastinate. We've got the Internet, so I kind of see that, you know, here's the Internet, and I could be doing my research paper, but there's the Internet. I'd rather be doing that. How about uh, oops. Pinterest, YouTube. I was a Pinterest junkie there for a little while. I haven't been on as much anymore, but I certainly do that. The television. The television is probably one of my biggest vices. I'm going to be completely honest with you. Uh, we actually just got rid of cable for two reasons. One, we did not want to to have uh, that bill anymore. I mean, we were paying a huge amount of money for like maybe 15 channels that we actually liked out of the whole 500 that we had. But also that we weren't doing anything else but watching TV all the time. So it's only been a few days, but hopefully <laughs> we'll be able to spend more time with the family as the weather gets warm and we have things to do. But terrible, terrible distraction. It keeps us wanted to do or need to do. How about cell phones? Cell phones are kind of a pet. So, you know, you got the cell phone out, the TV on. But the cell phone, I mean, sometimes it seems like people just can't put it down. And I, I certainly have been guilty of it myself, but, you know, it certainly distracts us. You know, you'll be in the middle of doing something, phone goes off, you're not watching, uh, so you make a mistake. But it, it's something that's there for you to check. Oh, I want to check my email instead of doing my work, my homework, et cetera. There's uh, a time distortion so we, we kind of feel one of the reasons we procrastinate is that we feel like we have all this time left. Oh, you know what? I'm going to be off for a whole week, so I'm going to do X, Y, and Z while I'm off. But then we say, you know what? I've got plenty of time. So I'm going to take the first couple of days and I'm going to, I'm going to enjoy myself or I'm going to watch TV. Oh, I'm going to have lunch with this one. And then the whole week is gone and you didn't get it done what you took the week off to do. So say it was cleaning out your garage or writing that paper that you needed to get done. So we have this complete distortion over over the time and, and how much of it we actually have. Here we go with my my issues again with my computer. Oh goodness. But time itself, procrastination is a thief of time. That's exactly what it is. It, if you procrastinate, you're selling your time for whatever you're procrastinating doing. So you have to think of it that way. You have this much time to do something, and if you're choosing to do something different, then you're just letting procrastination steal that time away from you. Remember before we talked about the amount of, of adults that don't have enough money saved for their retirement because they, they feel like, you know what, I have all this time left to put money away, eventually we'll get done, and then there's only $30,000 in some people's accounts to actually retire with, and it's definitely not enough. We have that invincible or indestructible feeling. So I know I have a couple of comic book fans on here. Um, but, you know, we feel like it's never going to happen to me, I'm never going to have this situation, so I'm not going to worry about it. I'm not going to worry about getting the insurance for such and such thing because it's never going to happen. Nobody's going to steal from me. You know, getting renter's insurance, updating your car insurance, your life insurance policies, that kind of thing. You have that invincibility to you that you feel like you don't need to do these things. You're overwhelmed with the amount of tasks that you need to do. 
that's another reason to procrastinate. You have so much that needs to get done in a day, a week, a month, in life in general. You're just so overwhelmed that you're not able to organize everything that needs to get done into a nice to-do list and be able to go through it one by one. It's just the task is just too overwhelming to do it. So I know that when we were moving, that was a big issue for us. We had so much to clean out. Our family had owned our house for over 30 years, and three generations of, of our family had lived in the house. So there was stuff from 1976 on, and we had a lot of work to do to try and clean that all up. But you know, at first it was such a daunting task, and we didn't know what we were going to do. But we just kind of took every weekend, a little bit here, a little bit there, I think the people at Save Us and Goodwill knew our names by heart. We just took it step by step and did what we need to do to get it done. And it was absolutely worth it. I mean, here we are in our nice home. Our family's healthy. We're happy. Things are going very well with us. But it did. It took a lot for us to get to that point where we could say, okay, look, we just need to do it. We need to fucking do it and get it done because we're not going to be ready to go. Okay, so let's let's take an opportunity here to put some things into perspective. Okay. One of the big reasons, and I mentioned this before, is that people don't like to step out of their comfort zone. Okay? They don't like change. They don't want to move into a different place because they're afraid that something's not going to work out the way they want it to. Now that we talked about that perfection before. You say, here's your comfort zone. And this is where the magic happens, right? So in order to stop procrastinating, you really need to, and to start, excuse me, and to really start living your dreams, you're going to have to step out of that comfort zone. If you embrace the change and open yourself up to the possibilities of what could be and imagine those things, it, and it doesn't have to be all at once, but one day at a time, one step at a time, you can certainly get there. But the important thing is, is to never stop forward towards your goal, okay? You open your mind to those possibilities I mentioned just a minute ago. You know, there's sometimes an inconvenience with change. Maybe it means you're not going to have enough time to go to the beach this summer. But at least you know that once you've completed whatever the task is, maybe that you want to, you know, go back for your degree. But, you know, if you know that, hey, if I just put this little extra effort in there, I can say at the end of the year, Yes, here, I've got this certificate or I got my degree. A little bit of an inconvenience, but think about it. Is it really worth it? It probably is. If you're asking yourself that question, it probably is. And again, just take it one step at a time. But just keep on stepping, even if it's a little step, half a step forward. At least it's moving in the right direction. You have to approach things with an appreciation and a positive attitude. So when you have a negative attitude about things, it, it really eats away at you. We actually talk about this in coaching. And the coaching school that I went to has a really great way of explaining it. There is such thing as catabolic energy and anabolic energy. So catabolic energy, you have to think of it as um, the energy that breaks things down. So when you're negative or have a negative attitude towards something, it actually – will eat away at you it, to the point where you just you don't even want to think about it anymore and you won't, won't make any progress on anything. Anabolic energy actually lifts you up, so they're like, like building blocks. So the more positive you are, the more apt to, uh, that you're going to be able to complete the task at hand. Not only that, but when you're more positive, you have a tendency to attract more people that are positive. When you're negative, you have a tendency to attract the negative people towards you. You ever hear the, the phrase, misery loves company? It's exactly true. So when you're negative, you're going to find a whole bunch of people that are going to be around you, and they're going to want to complain, and they're going to you know, have this negative, uh, negative thought process, and it's just going to eat away at you. It's going to eat away at them, and you're not going to be able to move forward. But when you have a positive attitude, you're going to attract those types of people, Good things will come out of that, absolutely. I, I mean, I love to go to, like, networking events and those kind of things. I love my coaching circles when we do that because they're all positive conversations, and I feel so lifted 
when I when I go to those. My spirit is lifted. I feel energized. I want to just hit the floor running. It's it's just an exciting thing to do. So try to try to let that negativity slide off, and remember that you know how far you've come. I think there's a there should be a little picture there that says. You know, no matter where you are right now, remember that you've moved forward. You're, you're further than where you used to be. So when we talked about the little baby steps, take it one day at a time and know that you're, you're not in the same place anymore. Let me say there sounds like there's a loud tapping noise. I might be just hitting the keys a little hard. I apologize. I'll, I'll try to keep that to a minimum. Set SMART goals. Now, I can certainly talk about this. I, in fact, I am going to talk about this a little more in another seminar, uh, but for the most part, I'm just going to go over it quickly and just explain that when you set your goals, they should be specific. Don't say, I just want to lose weight. I want to lose so many pounds, or maybe that's not, not what you want to do either, but maybe say, I want to get healthy by doing such and such, and make sure it's measurable. So I can tell that I'm getting healthy because my weight on the scale is going down and the inches and my clothes are, are getting thinner or I'm sorry, my looser, so on and so forth. There are attainable goals. So don't say I want to make a million dollars this year unless you know that there's a surefire way that you're going to do that. You want to say, you know, I, I, I want to at least pay off this credit card this year. This is my goal. This is how I'm going to do this. Make sure they're realistic and that they're timely. Set a, don't say, you know, eventually I want to finish my degree. Say, look, I want to finish my degree in the next nine months. So I know how many classes I need to get done, and I'm going to call a counselor tomorrow, and this is how to do that. Now, we have a whole process for that as life coaches. So if you're interested in learning more about how to set up SMART goals, we actually call them AIM SMART. There's a whole other process prior to setting out SMART goals. Uh, but if you're interested in that, please email me, and I'll be happy to discuss those with you. We can set up a session. Create a specific to-do list with deadlines. So kind of like the SMART goals, but I just wanted to explain the to-do list a little bit. So it's great to sit down and write out a whole, whole to-do list. So maybe it's not a goal that you need to do where you need to set down, I'm sorry, set an actual whole list of SMART goals. Maybe it's just a to-do list, like I need to paint the trim on the house, or I need to, um, I don't know, weed the garden or something like that. The one caveat I have with the to-do list is make sure that when you do the to-do list that you're not constantly shifting things around because you don't want to do them, <laughs> that you want to procrastinate do them, doing them. I certainly have done that where it's like, you know, I'm going to add three more things to my to-do list today because I really don't want to do that other thing. It's too hard, it's work, and I really don't feel like doing that today. You want to give yourself a one-day reprieve and say, you know what, I'm going to wait for tomorrow to do that one thing, but I'm going to do these other three things instead, fine but just get to that thing eventually. Don't keep shifting it around because you really don't want to do it because then you're just procrastinating and you're not making the situation any better. Find something you're passionate about. I can't stress that enough. I actually had a conversation with um, a group of moms here in Raleigh. I belong to a couple of meetup groups if, if you don't belong to Meetup, it's a really great opportunity for you to, uh, to find groups and, and things that you might be interested in. Um, but Meetup, I, I went on and found a, a group of moms in the area, and we went to dinner the other night. And one of the conversations that I had with them was, you know, what does everybody do for a hobby? And they all kind of looked at me blankly like, you know what? I don't really have a hobby. I really don't have anything that I'm interested in. I have a few people that said that they were interested in reading, uh, a couple people that said, you know, they garden a little bit, but for the most part, it was kind of like, you know, I, I really don't have anything that I'm passionate about. I'm passionate about coaching. That's absolutely what I love. I love listening to TED Talks. I love reading information from Oprah's Magazine, um, constantly looking up. Um, there's a, a person on Facebook that I'm really close with that I'm constantly looking up his stuff. He's a great author. I'll look up his name later. I know it's Bernard, but I can't remember his last name off the top of my head. Uh, but he, you know, great thing there. So I have a lot of passion behind that. But find something that you're passionate about, so that you have something to look forward to, and reward yourself with that. Hey, you know what? I did all these things that I wanted to get done. 
So now I'm going to go reward myself by going to do something that I'm passionate about. That also helps to increase that that um, energy level that I mentioned a few minutes ago. Because what are you doing then? You, you're giving yourself an opportunity to immerse yourself in something that you really love doing. And when your energy is raised, you're going to feel like you want to get other things done. I want it. You know, it's great to have that opportunity to do this. Now let me use that energy and get this other thing done. Use the buddy system. I really like that one. Um, so we don't really call them buddies. We call them accountability partners. And the reason is that, you know, it's great to have somebody that you can go to and say, this is what I want to do, and I really need your help keeping me on track. I can't seem to, to do that. Can you give me a call next Wednesday and ask me if I finished what I needed to do? This is where a life coach comes in really handy because we're able to go ahead and work with you, figure out what your goals are, set up a whole plan, and then we keep you accountable by speaking with you every week, finding out how you're doing, you know, what were your, your issues or barriers to getting that done. So it is a great opportunity if you do have one to work with it, like, which, by the way, I'm available. All right. We've got the buddy system. No loan zone. Two-man policy is mandatory. I have to have two people there. Okay. So in just a minute, I'm going to give you the opportunity to ask some questions. Hopefully I have some answers for you. But I did want to give you the opportunity to see some of the special offers I'm going to offer as part of this class. First is a three-week uh, group coaching system that I have. The coaching will be done in a group setting via phone. So the people that decide that they want to sign up for that course will be able to, to call in on the phone, and then we'll take turns discussing different people's concerns and how we're going to go about working on, on those. So it's a group environment. There will be an additional information packet sent out every week on Wednesday prior uh, with the instructions and uh, what things you need to know, what things, what homework you need to do. With those. And then there will be a weekly homework and accountability check-in done each week to make sure that you're still on track and you're doing everything that you need to do. The dates of those group coaching sessions are going to be March 9th, March 16th, and March 23rd at 7 p.m. So it's the next three weeks at 7 o'clock. And that's going to be a cost $79. So if you're interested in doing that one, I just give you the link there that you can go ahead and click on. And that will bring you right to the page. And that will go ahead and, and bring you to the sign-up sheet right there. Okay? The other package that I'm offering is four weeks of individual coaching. So if you're not as comfortable working in a group environment or you feel that you would prefer a little more one-on-one -on -one um, work, that's certainly fine. We can certainly do that. Coaching is done on a one on one basis via phone. Uh, again, you'll get additional information packets just like the other group would, and we do homework and accountability check in, but the dates are more flexible and the times are more flexible. So, whatever works for you, I will certainly work with. Obviously, working on one on one is a little more expensive. Um, it's going to be $249, but you get an extra week of coaching in there uh, for cost. So again, there is a link for you to go ahead and click on if you're interested in that class, or excuse me, in that, that session. Um, I will let you know that when you click on that link, if you are interested in the individual coaching, it does give you a date. Just ignore that. I had to put that in in order for the system to actually work. Uh, but you can actually pay through PayPal for either one of these. So if you're interested, this will be up here. Uh, let's see. Somebody said that they lost me. Hopefully you could hear everything. But, again, if there's anything that anybody missed, please let me know. I'll be happy to send out the information again. I can send you this whole this uh, whole P, um, system as a PDF. Excuse me, this whole PowerPoint as a PDF to you so that you can actually see all the information again. Okay, great. Um, this is my contact information. So realize it better you. So uh, you have all the information there in front of you. My email address is probably the best way to reach me, and it's adshabra at realizeabetteryou.com. Again, my website is there, so you can certainly check that out at your convenience as well. 
uh, if you're looking for motivation speaking for your business or uh, other charity, community events, anything of that nature, please let me know. I'm certainly willing to do that at any time as well. And I have some coming attractions coming up. So just taking a minute to give you that information. I have a new blog that will be coming out on my website. That's called Mixed Up, Maxed Out, and on a Mission. And that's kind of about my journey uh, to get here in Raleigh, North Carolina, and what's going on with us now, and how we're, we're trying to get through our goals and missions as to what we'd like to have in our lives. And there'll be some additional teleclasses that I will be having posted up on my website as well. So again, that's realizeabetteryou.com. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and open up the line for questions, if you'll give me just a second. Um, if you do me a favor, up at the top of your screen, if you have any questions, it says my mood. It should say my mood over to the right-hand side at the top. If you want to just click on the raise hand option, and I will see if I can get this to actually work. <laughs> Anybody have any questions? If you can't get that to work, you can type your question in the chat box. And a couple of people say that they prefer to talk to me in person with some of the questions. They don't want to talk about it with everybody here, and that's completely fine. That's understandable. Okay, so somebody asked me what techniques do I find especially uh, effective for me. Number one, I, I really like the buddy system. I certainly love that because when I have other people coach me, and I certainly get coached as well. I have coaches that I work with that are friends of mine, and I'll say, hey, you know what, can you do me a favor? This is something I really want to get done, but I'm not. I'm really not getting it done, and I'm not sure why. Can you check in with me in a week and make sure that I made progress on it? And just knowing that somebody is going to call me out on it, absolutely. I can go right ahead and, and get the work done because I know somebody's going to be asking me for it. Um, but that's kind of become a, a bad habit of mine, if you will. When I stopped working last year, uh, I took a severance package, and because I, I don't have a set schedule every day, Sometimes I can get a little lazy about things. So it's, it's a great question. That's a great way for me to, to get that done. The other thing that I, I really um, like is, is the energy boosters I mentioned before, too, is going to those meetup groups, listening to some TED Talks, just listening to some inspiring stories will just raise my energy, and then I just I want to get going. I want to get stuff done. And I did that this week, too, to be honest. When I was putting this presentation together, I really wasn't sure that I was going to get it done in time. So I just listened to some TED Talks, and I was able to, to really motivate myself to get all the work done. And I said, better than energy drinks. It's healthier. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, energy drinks are no good for you. Don't drink those things. Are there any other questions? All right. Well, I I don't see any other questions. If I did miss anybody, any questions that they have, please feel free to email me. We'll go ahead and close out the sessions. The session, excuse me, a little early tonight. Uh, if you did not get an opportunity to click on one of those links or jot that down, please feel free to email me or give me a call, and I'll be happy to give you that information. Hopefully, you enjoyed tonight's discussion. And we'll be looking for additional ones in the future. And I really appreciate everybody taking the time to listen in tonight. It, it really means a lot to me. This was um, not only an opportunity for me to give you some information, but also gave me an opportunity to say, you know what, I could actually do this. <laughs> so thank you so much, everybody, and I hope you have a great night. Thanks.